Lights are usually followed by shadows. Once the Japanese agency became independent from its parent company, Watanabe Productions, Hiromiko, who was at the peak of his career as an idol, left Janis agency. Then the dependent Four Leaves also disbanded. Tanokin Toryo's breakthrough came at a time when they were panting after losing their biggest earner, Hiromiko. Shonen Tai and Hikaru Genji's big breakthrough continued. The 1980s was a time when Jani Kitagawa's long-held dream, the idea of shining on stage and dancing boy idols was Egypt. Good luck comes by coughing. Hikaru Genji's popularity exploded. A scandalous book was released in 1988. It is to Hikaru Genji. The Forbidden Half Century of Former Four Leaves Kitakoji. Nobuhiro Motohashi, the book's ghost writer, described the situation at the time. Porn director Toru Muranishi, with whom he had a professional relationship, was in a dispute with the Janis agency over a scandal involving Toshihiko Tahara of Tanukin Toryo. When Toru Muranishi was shooting an adult film, an actress who starred in it talked about having spent the night with Toshihiko Tahara. Toru Muranishi created his film based on the concept of a woman who spent a night with Toshi. Furious, Vice President Mary and her executives went directly to the publishing company to cover up the article about Toshihiko Tara's scandalous affair with an adult film actress and forced the publisher to write a false article. With this incident, the Japanese agency, which until then had been equal with the media, learned that it could control the media as it wished by directly complaining to the head of the media and pressuring them, saying, if anything happens, our talent won't be released. It has kept the media under control. Toru Muranishi tried to hit back at the Japanese agency by calling and gathering behind the scenes information about Japanese. One of them was that Kitakoji was living together with Jani Kitagawa. After the breakup of the Four Leaves, Muranishi tracked down Koji Kita, who had returned to his hometown after his arrest for drug possession. Nobuhiro Motohashi was chosen as Kita's interviewer. He asked Kita about everything from his upbringing to his arrest. No matter how many times he asked, is it true that you had a close relationship with Jani Kitagawa he would brush me off, saying, that's just a rumor, and I don't know anything about it. That gradually led to talking. Koji Kita was scouted by Jani and given his room in Shinjuku as his residence. He was 16 years old at the time. There, he was forced to have his first sexual experience with Jani. He endured the nightly oral and anal intercourse with the sole intention of making his debut. The relationship with Jani lasted for the next four years, and Kita, who isn't gay, was called Kochan by Jani, and became as close to him as a lover or a married couple. The relationship between Kita and Jani continued after his debut as Four Leaves. Kita was exhausted from work. One screamed, stop it, as Jani touched his body. Kita ran away in his pajamas, looking very pale and in tears, and was seen by a fan. One day, Kita was approached by a boy who was eight years old, an aspiring idol about Jani's in expressible behavior. Eventually, he discovered that other boys who slept at the camp were also being sexually 
victimized. Then he decided, let's get out of this camp, which has become a house of lust from these men. Nobuhiro Motohashi wrote a book of accusations to Hikaru Genji, which became a bestseller with 350,000 copies sold in a short period of time, even though Jani Kitagawa's proclivities had become known to the world, none of the media, with the exception of some weekly magazines, were willing to cover the story. TV stations were particularly obvious, beeping when Kita's name was mentioned and treating it as swear words. Angered by this, the following year, Director Muranishi produced a video work, video version, to Hikaru Genji, accusing Jani Kitagawa of sexual abuse. The former Janis Jr., who was forced into anal sex under the criminal law of the time, was sought out and interviewed. But at the time, Japanese society as a whole tended to view sexual violence as little more than a scandal. Kitakoji's allegations were met with general disapproval. Toru Muranishi also had the foolish idea that he could be ignored or even eliminated because he was directing an adult movie. Such pursuit of problems and making cases are essentially the responsibility of the media, the police, and the courts. There was no LGBTQ concept at the time. When survivors reported to the police, they were not taken seriously because it was stereotyped as male-on-female sexual assault. When Kita tried to get TV stations and newspapers to interview him, they snickered at him and refused to cover his story. Only some evening newspapers and real-life magazines handled the story. As to why the news media didn't cover it extensively, reading between the lines of the agency, and Kita's career after he left Janice's agency may have had an impact. Kita has been involved in drugs since his idol days and has been arrested. The media can trust the testimony of a convicted drug addict who seems to have been high on drugs. The media would have had a part in making that decision. Kita Koji was frustrated and disparate. No one would deal with his confession even though he had risked his life for it. Furthermore, while Kita continued to make accusations in this to Hikaru Genji series, he reunited the four leaves in 2002 in reconciled from with the Janice agency. When he passed away in 2012 at the age of 63rd after an illness, he also left words of gratitude to Jani and Mary Kitagawa. It's doubtful that there was any will to hold Jani Kitagawa accountable. However, he also has even a worm will turn and doesn't want others to become victims like him. After the four leaves reunited, their popularity didn't revive. After several years of solo work, he held yoga classes. Until his illness became more serious, he was apparently performing actively in live performances with the support of his old fans. Shortly before his death, his wife reported on Kita's medical condition in front of his fans and raised funds to help pay for his treatment. However, there was a sudden change in his condition, and he was ready to die, posted a message to his fans on the blog. At the end of the sentence, he concluded by thanking Jani Kitagawa and Mary Kitagawa. It seems that Kitakoji wanted to apologize at the end for criticizing Jani 
and others in his tell-all book. Despite this thought, Jenny and Mary didn't send a single wreath to Kitakoji's funeral.